talk about an hour and a half and take a break and then have Q&A. Uh, what I'm going to do is like, there's a lot of material. I'm going to skirt over everything schematically, sort of. Uh, and so you will have a lot of questions. Uh, there's no way we can cover it all. We have, uh, we have an academy that lasts a month uh, on this whole program. And uh, it goes into each thing I'm going to talk about in, in depth. Our next academy, as a matter of fact, is in uh, France near Bordeaux. Uh, in two and a half weeks. We're going to actually, e each academy that we do, Earthship Academy, uh, uh, builds a building. We build a building and we conduct classes on the aspects of that building. So uh, then we do workshops like this. The reason we're doing this northern tour, we call it, is because these buildings, I've been working on them for 50 years, uh, and uh, I'm old, and uh, they're, they're starting to work really good. I mean, I need to get these out into places where they will be really tested. We developed these at uh, 2,300 meters in elevation in New Mexico. And so because of that altitude, it gets a lot colder than it does here, than it does in Reykjavik, where we're going next, Oslo. It gets seriously cold there. You can literally die if you have a flat tire or something out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and these buildings, we have a fleet of them that we use as nightly rentals on Airbnb, actually. And uh, they keep people warm without any backup heat. And of course, New Mexico has more sun than here, but what I'm going to point out to you tonight is um, sun is only half of the issue. Uh, the other issue is what we call thermal mass. It's how these buildings are built with mass insulated away from the earth and um, uh, holding whatever temperature is, is put in them. And sometimes that's just the temperature of 16 people, you know, can heat one of these buildings. Uh, so it's not just sun. So we're, we're interested in pointing out to people that, uh, that the sun is not essential to cut your utility bill for heating by 75%. And if the entire world cut their use of fossil fuel by 75%, we would be able to hang out on this planet a while longer. And that's kind of a good idea, maybe. Uh, so anyway, the, the other thing is that having done this for as long as I have and worked in all kinds of countries and all kinds of situations, um, and I guess given our current political situation in the US that uh, I won't mention any names, but uh, the only truth that I really see in today's world is kids, six-year-old kid. They see the truth, they speak the truth. You know, it's too early for them to uh, be trying to make money. It's too early for them to uh, be trying to have power or whatever influence people are. Uh, they're just the truth. They're just walking truth. So we're, I, I guess, and I guess I have to speak for my company, uh, we're really trying to get to where they are because it's definitely better than where us adults are, you know. So anyway, we have, we're starting to put everything out in what we call kids view. Uh, so this is just a few, a few introductory parts to what we call kids view. We are people. We live on the earth, you know. Is there a lie yet? Uh, Sometimes it gets uh, too cool on the earth and our bodies get cold. You know, that's the truth. Uh, the earth has heat coming from the sky. It's the sun. It can keep us warm. 
Sometimes it's too warm on the earth and our bodies get hot. If we go into the earth, it can be cooler. Deep in the earth, the temperature is not heated by the sun. If we understand the earth and the sun, we can stay happy and comfortable on the earth. We can make homes that understand the earth and the sun. There will be no need to hurt the earth trying to get fuel for our stoves and air conditioners. The earth and the sun will take care of us and we will learn to respect and appreciate them. The earth can give us comfort. Comfortable shelter is one of our needs. Our bodies are mostly water. We always need water. Water comes from the sky on the earth. The earth gives us water. It is rain. Water is one of our needs. It's two needs we have. Our bodies use food to make energy to keep us alive and active. We eat food. The earth grows food for us. We can help the earth grow food. Food is one of our needs. That's three needs. Our bodies make human waste from the parts of the food that we do not need. We use a toilet to get rid of this waste. Where does it go? The earth has a way of turning this human waste back into soil to grow more food. If we understand this process, we can help the earth do this. Containing and transforming our human waste is one of our needs. That's four needs. We've invented many things that use electricity. We have lights, computers, cell phones, TVs, and more. We must have electricity for our daily lives. The energy from the sun and the wind can be transformed into electricity. We can work with the earth to make our own electricity. Electricity is one of our needs. A lot of things we do in our daily lives result in leftover products that we do not use or want. Bottles, cans, tires, cardboard, and many more products are left over from our daily lives. We call these products garbage. We can't figure out a way, if we can figure out a way to use these products, they are no longer garbage. The earth has no garbage. People created garbage. Having a way of dealing with our garbage is one of our needs. That's five needs. That's six needs. We have six needs that must be met in order to have a life on the earth. Comfortable shelter, water, food, treatment of human waste, electricity, treatment of garbage. If we were traveling on a ship at sea, that ship would have to take care of all of these needs. If we were traveling on a ship in space, that ship would have to take care of all these needs. In either case, we would have to help the ship take care of our basic needs. We live on the earth. We need a ship to live in on the earth. We need an earth ship. We can help our earth ship take care of us. This means we need to understand the earth much better than we do now. That's really all we have to say. I'll see you. Uh, the, the kids, if they understand this, they'll do something about it. You know, a lot of people, you know, are, uh, they get a grasp, but they're, <clears throat> they have a multitude of reasons why they don't want to do something about it. Where we live, it gets to ridiculously low temperatures, Celsius, you know, minus 30, minus 32, something like that, Celsius. And this is where we live. This is an Amazon jungle that is not using any fuel whatsoever. As a matter of fact, one thing I like to say about these buildings is that they, uh, they are, every time we build one of these buildings, we're actually putting a piece of the rainforest back on this earth. Granted, it's inside, but, uh, and some of it's not, but uh, it is, our process of living is creating this. Uh, and we call it sustainable autonomy for everyone. This is our climate. This is where we live. You, there's a lot of places at these northern latitudes that are like this. But this is inside of that with no fuel. 
And so we're, we're living in places like this. This is part of our living room, a part of our spaces. You know, bananas, grapes, fish. Uh, this is the price we pay for making this decision to live this way. Uh, now, what inspires us to do this is this. This, to me, is inspiration to go in the opposite direction. You know, I don't want to be a part of this. If I came here from another planet and I saw this, I would say, what, these creatures are, are nuts. You know, <laughs> what is wrong with that? So, I don't want to do this. It's ugly. In addition to the fact that wherever they're getting the power that runs through these lines is destroying something too. Look at this. This is what we do with our human waste. This is everywhere. I've been all over the world. There's nobody treats it right. New York City, London, Ushuaia, southern tip of Argentina. I mean, we just make it go away. We don't really know what happens to it. This is what happens to it. So this is what we intelligent humans do. We do this with our garbage. We have, we pile it up and it spontaneously combusts and uh, we got this. Uh, we got, when we do make our power and ship it through lines, you know, this nuclear power plant in Japan is still destroying the northern hemisphere. So we're looking at, okay, what's the earth do? You, you see these things, they seem to manage and they managed a lot better until we got here. You put a bunch of them together and you got this. Nobody really argues about this being beautiful or being nice or whatever. You don't ever hear anybody say, there are too many trees. Nobody has ever said that to me at least. But you do hear people say there are too many of these. These things are, there are, the way they act right now, the way they behave on this planet, there are too many of them. Um, and when you put a lot of them together, you get stuff like this. So, you know, it makes me wonder, okay, where, where's the intelligence here? You know, is the tree intelligent or is the human intelligent? And so the humans bring this kind of stuff onto this planet. This, you know. To me, this is a natural resource. We build buildings out of tires. So when I look at this mountain of tires, I'm like, uh, you know, take me there. I work the rest of my life. I'm lusting when I see this. And look at this. This is under the Caribbean. You know, we make it go away. We pile it up. We, 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 we don't understand. To me, these things, this is gold. I mean, this is a building material I've been using for 30 years. It's fantastic. Bottles, we throw these things away. They're, they're never going to wear out. Bottles are never going to wear out. Plastic bottles, they're all over the planet by the billions. So what I'm seeing on this planet, and this is just my, my view, uh, is the direction, the pathway that we're on is headed to, toward a bummer. I call it a bummer, you know. Uh, I mean, look at our president. Uh, but the, we're headed for this bummer. And it used to be when I'd talk about this, you know, I've, I've had this little drawing 40 years or something. Uh, people would argue, you know, we're not really headed for a bummer. It's not really that bad. Well, everybody agrees it's that bad now. You know, they see the pollution of the river streams and air and nuclear power plants and people uncomfortable and people driving airplanes into the Twin Towers. And we're just because of haves and have nots and everything. We're headed for a bummer. Everybody agrees now. Nobody, nobody disagrees, with the fact, disagrees with the fact that we're headed for a bummer. And so I tend to oversimplify things, seriously, uh, which is why I have the kids' view. Uh, my solution is simple. We just get off of the path. We've got a thousand different directions to go besides that path, and none of them lead to the bummer. Only our path leads to the bummer. Now, I've gotten off of the path. And I've gotten in a lot of trouble for getting off the path. But I'm trying to forge ways that are off of the path where other people won't get in trouble. Because you do get in trouble for getting off the path. You know, nobody likes it if you get off the path. And I'm getting out. This is, these are the things that kind of keep you on the path. Monsanto, nuclear, big gas and oil, pharmaceuticals, 
politics, tradition, re regulations, religion, economics, all of these things tend to just keep you on this ridiculous path. So what we're proposing, and, and we're doing this from, this is not a pipe dream, we're doing it. And that's why I'm out here talking about it, is because it's working. Um, we're proposing housing as an independent global vessel, a ship, to sail on the earth. And we call it the global model airship. It works, this model, you can see the similarity between all those buildings in different <coughs> places. This model works everywhere. We'll tweak it and tune it for different climates a little bit, but basically this model works everywhere. It's like Toyota, Toyota Corolla, you know. It's the car for people. It goes anywhere, everywhere. Uh, yeah, you'll get into a four-wheel drive Toyota pickup, or you'll get into a uh, BMW that goes 130 miles an hour down the highway. But still, the basic car is something like a Toyota Corolla. In my generation, it was the Chevy Nova, but a lot of people don't even remember those. So we're looking at housing as an independent global vessel. So that's where this has taken us. I'm going to do a brief look back into how this came about. Uh, it started with this idiot out in the Mesa of New Mexico building a building out of beer cans. And it was in papers all over the world. Not as something ecological, not as something intelligent. It was really portrayed as an insane person in New Mexico building a house out of beer cans. And the Denver Post had it on the front page underneath Nixon being impeached. Um, the building is still standing today. It's, it's the building that kind of started me thinking in this direction. Other things started me thinking in this direction, like strapping myself on top of a pyramid in a coffer. Uh, that helped. Uh, we did do some pyramid research, and there is something going on with pyramids. Why do you think they built these giant ones in Egypt and everything? There's something going on there. Uh, I don't claim to know what it is, but I have... I have strapped myself on top of one. Uh, that helps. Uh, I built them. Pyramid, but the, those buildings, they did align. You know, there's a shaft in the pyramid in Giza that, that aligns with the Pleiades, you know, the constellation, the Pleiades, uh, the Seven Sisters, they call it. Uh, the, in the golden section and all kinds of mathematical formulas, Fibonacci series and all these things are built into the pyramids. There's something going on there. Why we don't know anything about it, I don't know. But, I mean, I really do kind of understand why we don't know anything about it. We don't know anything about this planet that we live on, you know. So we've kind of lost it here. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying go back. I'm saying go forward, but I'm saying get off the path. It did involve me learning to fly. I'll talk more about that, possibly. Um, so we go all the way back to the early 70s, and, you know, they called it hippie housing, crazy guy out in the Mesa building out of garbage. You know, I, you know I've heard it all. Uh, but this, this was an early beer can tire solar house. Uh, we built domes. Uh, we had to go far out into the desert to build them where nobody would really catch us. Uh, we built domes and started adding greenhouses to them. We got really serious about these domes that you can build with beer cans. They're so light, you don't need forms. We added greenhouses. We're learning about catching, catching heat. We started building out of tires. Uh, we started putting windmills built into the houses. We're just trying everything. We're seeing, you know, we're, we're experimenting. We're, we're seeing, well, we need electricity. Where do we get it? Well, why don't we make our own? Uh, well, we have garbage, but why don't we use it for something? Well, we need to be warm. Why don't we try to make the houses stay warm? It was just asking questions and trying to do something about it. Uh, and so it led to me having all these different compounds of contraptions out in the deserts and up in the mountains. And of course, I started drinking. I mean, what else can you do? <laughs> and it ended up in uh, 30 or so years ago with a building we called the Earthship. It hasn't really ended up. It keeps evolving. I still live in this one today. Uh, you walk in it in February. There's no heater. It's warm. It's evenly warm. Uh, yeah, I'm still, I mean, I, uh, I don't mean to be arrogant here, but I am. But uh, in the middle of February, I walk in my house and it's warm 
and I've been walking in it for 30 years, and I'm still, when I walk in my house at one o'clock in the morning, after two or three or four or five margaritas, uh, the first thing I think of is, damn, this place is warm. You know, it's probably the margaritas, but. <laughs> well, we built a lot of them. This one's for a movie star in Colorado. They call it an Earth Yacht. Uh, you know, we've done them all over the, this one, I've never seen it. We wrote books. People took the books and built them from the books. Uh, I've never seen this, this one, but that's, that's our idea. Is Our idea is to empower people all over the world to do this for themselves. To one, understand it, and possibly do it better than us. Because uh, when you look at all these things, like the cartoons I showed at first, when you're trying to address all of those six things, it gets into physics and biology and you know, structure and all kinds of things. You, it takes a long time to learn all, their, all you need to learn about all of those things. And uh, we put it out there what we've learned, but what I'm saying is there are many, if, 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 a, if thousands or millions of people were at least thinking this way, it would be so much better than what we're doing because you know, we're not the most intelligent people in the world. Uh, we're just people, and we're trying to do this, but I know there, there are really, really smart, intelligent people out there, but they don't, they don't want to do this. They want to do something else. And if, people, if the people with brains did this, it would be amazing, is what I'm saying. Uh, we have a little bit of brains, but not that much. Uh, so we, went to, we, to, we try to do this in challenging situations. They, I made these drawings and bought some land up in the mountains and the realtors that sold me the land said, you can't build up there. Uh, we built up there. And it's 45 degree slope. Um, it's, there's no utilities up there. No, can't do wells, can't do septic tanks, can't do anything. But we build housing that does it all for us. And so, you know, the house is buried on the outside and you got a banana tree growing on the inside. I mean. You know, you go to the store right now here in Finland and you get your bananas. They probably came from Ecuador and they got a carbon footprint the size of a Volkswagen. If you grow a banana in your own home, it has no carbon footprint. And we got bananas everywhere. Um, so these are buildings that were done up in the mountains uh, where we experimented. This is here because it just shows you through history there have been a lot of battles that we've had to fight. I got in all kinds of trouble, and I still am in trouble. I'm always in trouble, uh, because I'm getting off the path, uh, you know, and I have to call people idiots sometimes, and, uh, you know, I have to uh, cause trouble, but it causes trouble for me, but there's no way you're gonna get off that path without having trouble, that's my point. We did start a community, finally. We did a couple of communities. This is the third one, and it's, it's successful, I would say. Uh, the way we did it was it's right along a highway. And uh, the lots in the community don't touch each other. They're circles. So there's land in between the lots that we don't develop, that we don't do anything with it. The tarantulas, the rattlesnakes, the coyotes, the birds, the elk, the deer, they all get to still be there. That We haven't interrupted their habitat at all. We just moved in to it with our own little nest. But we, you know, normally the lots just take up everything. Everybody fences off their lot and the animals can go to hell. You know, the insects, the snakes, we keep it all. And it's working. Here's just not too long ago, a herd of elk running through our community, walking through our community, grazing. You know, sandhill cranes still land in the community because we're living with them. We're not replacing them. Uh, I think that's the humility that we need to find to continue to have the privilege to live on this planet. Uh, so in that community, we have done a lot of development and evolution of buildings that address those six points that the cartoons talk about. You know, this building is sitting there. We have harsh, harsh winters. I mean, you can literally, people die where we live. They die if they have a flat tire and they have to walk a long ways and they didn't have the warm clothes. They freeze to death, solid. Uh, it's that cold. But inside one of these buildings with no fuel, you can be sitting in your living room eating a banana uh, from your own living room. 
So we've had a lot of evolution of the buildings in this community. We, ha we have a program of harvesting rainbows, which I may have time to go into. <laughs> uh, but because we have been such bad architects, let's say, uh, they won't let us use the word architecture in New Mexico anymore. Uh, but I don't want to, you know. Uh, I told them to shove it, basically. Uh, so we invented a profession called biotechnology. And biotexture is achieving sustenance through encounter of earth phenomena. I mean, we all need sustenance. That's it. Yeah. Thanks. Great. I said I like Helsinki. Uh, so that's what biotexture is. It's a profession. We have an academy that teaches this profession. Actually, we have a university that's about to... Uh, let people get credit for their doctorate degree by taking this course. Uh, it is a different direction. What is Earth phenomena? There's just some of them. Wind, rain, sun, gravity, condensation, thermal mass, lightning, rainbows, all aspects of biology and physics, and much, much more. This is the phenomena of this planet. Uh, people ask me a lot who, what architect, you know, was my mentor and who did I, you know, really look up to and learn from and I, nobody, you know, the only human that even comes close to me looking at them as a mentor would be Noah, you know, he, he built a boat out in the middle of the desert and everybody called him an idiot. I could relate to that. <laughs> um, but it's a, a tree. A tree drops its leaves, they aren't in wrappers. They just fall to the earth and become earth. The tree has pipes that suck up water. The tree puts out oxygen and, and the animals and us need it. And the animals put out CO2 and the tree needs it. There's a nice exchange there. The tree has its own energy system of absorbing the energy.